Well, welcome to Goodness Fellowship Church on Facebook Live. We're glad that you joined us today. We're excited. Hey, it's not like being together, you know, hugging each other, shaking hands, but it's the next best thing, I believe. At least we can communicate and thank God for that. Hey, this isn't forever. It's just until. See, everything comes to pass sooner or later. Now, I want to remind everyone that's watching, if you will at this point just simply share this, uh, the, the program that's going to be watching, I'm going to just go to your share on Facebook, and it will go to your page on Facebook and others. Many other people, a lot of people will be able to see it that wouldn't normally get, get to see it just through Good News Fellowship. So I want you to do that. And, hey, we're going to have some music and the Word of God. I believe I have a word that's going to make a difference in your life. So prepare your heart. Get ready. Call a neighbor. Let's get excited, okay? Caleb, y'all come on in here. Let's do some music. Well, how's everybody doing this morning? The Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in Him.
That's the way I would do it if I was doing it. Yeah. Well, I want to tell you something. Uh, while He is the Lord God that changes not, God never changes, the Bible says. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So while God never changes, the difference is you and I do. The Bible says that we go from glory to glory, even into his image. So we start off not only in the natural change and constantly, but once you're born again, there is a continual change and development that's taken place. And one of these days we're going to be presented, hey, we're going to look just like him. The Bible says we will know him for we shall be like him. And the reason you know him, the more you know him, is because you're, it's the most, or you're actually getting more and more like him. Well, the less you know him, it's because you haven't allowed the change as a believer to take place. But we are in a day of changes. Uh, these days of shutdown and, uh, could I say, shut in, that's kind of how they got us labeled, social distancing, you know. It really, there's something spiritual going on. There's a door. We've gone through a door. This is a doorway that we're in the threshold, so to speak, going from one day to another day spiritually. And God has got a plan. Everything in this day is changing. Everything. On the other side of this threshold is a new world of understanding. A new world of living. Now it won't be rapidly because you see we actually change from glory to glory. And while things are changing in the natural realm, you can lay hold of the understanding that it's already changed in the realm of the spirit. Because the spirit realm is the, is the parent realm. It's where God is. The Bible says in John 4, 24 that God is a spirit. And them that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So God, that is a spirit, created all this natural that we operate in. So the real you is a spirit being. So it changes first in the spirit, and then it changes in the natural. So all these changes that's going on in the natural, you just mark it down, that's because something in the spirit has already changed. Now we are not believers believing that God is going to do something. We are believing because God has already done something. The Bible says, and we read it a lot, and people preach the devil out of this one, and I could have said it another way, <clears throat> that as it were in the days of Noah, so also in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Then they go into the part of the scriptures where they were eating, drinking, and marrying, and giving in marriage, and knew not until Noah entered the ark and a flood came and took them away. Now that is true. That's exactly what happened to the unbelieving world. But I want to focus on one little line there, and that's the beginning of that verse where it said, as it were in the days of Noah. Well, you see, it named the negative but you'll have to go over into the book of Genesis and read the account of Noah to find out how it was in Noah's day. How was it with Noah? Well, the Bible says that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's how it was. So there is a time of grace. We're living, as it were, in the days of Noah. You and I, there's great grace right now. And this wonderful grace that Noah obtained in the eyes of the Lord, it was so powerful and so wonderful that it also spilled over onto seven other people, his wife and his daughters and uh, son, uh, daughters-in-law and sons. It covered his family. God's grace is sufficient. Now, there's some people watching, I know you're really concerned about people that you love deeply. And we all have people in our lives that, hey, you know, they need to tighten up a little bit. They don't seem to be spiritually where they need to be, and you know it, and, and it bothers you. But I want you to know this, that the grace of God in your life covers. 
And God is a forgiving God. And if you will begin to speak the word of God over their lives, you don't have to get in their face and preach, but speak the word of God over their lives. Allow God's word to work in the realm of the spirit. Just like when Peter uh, and Jesus and the rest of the disciples come along after Jesus had cursed the fig tree the day after. He said, look there, Master. That fig tree you cursed yesterday has dried up from the roots. Well, the roots are all in the unseen. You can't see under the ground. But there is where the miracle started. It began in the unseen. And then it manifested into the seen. Most of you are, are saying things like this to a wood heater. You give me some heat and I'll put some wood in. But God wants you to put the wood in and believe before you see. See, that's what faith is. Faith is believing before there is seeing. See, once you can see it, once you can handle it, once you can taste of it, it you don't need faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Well, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, like I said, we read that and immediately we think about the negative things, about all that people were doing. But this wonderful grace that Noah found, it was for the saving of his household. And there's something else. Noah was preparing to take a trip, a wonderful trip that was going to take him from a curse to a blessing. God told Noah, Noah, build something. Build it. Build me an ark. Build something redemptive. And Jesus Christ is what you got to build within your heart. He is the ark. Why did Noah have to build something redemptive? Because it was going to rain. It never rained before. There was going to be a judgment, not upon Noah, but upon that which was against God. And that old world that Noah lived in was coming to an end. Well, we're going to take a little break here and have some more music. And uh, once more, I want to remind you that go ahead and share this on your page. Just hit share down there. And if it goes to your page, then your friends can tune in as they like. And you'll have it to keep the pass on later. Well, come on in, Caleb.
God told Noah, <clears throat> build something redemptive. It's going around. Build something redemptive. It's going around. And that old world was coming to an end. I'm encouraging you to build something redemptive. Because an old world is coming to an end. In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 14, it instructions to Noah. God said, make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms thou shalt make in the ark. And shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Now, you notice the ark represents Christ. And Noah was in Christ. I tell people all the time this. I believe it's extremely important. When you're born again, Christ is in you. That's the seed. But the maturation of that seed, when that seed matures, that's you in Christ. Jesus said, I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. Now Jesus is in you as a believer. Now you need to get in maturity in him. There's a big difference. You wonder why some people, after they're born again, they don't act any different than they've ever acted? He said, well, they weren't really ever born again. Well, what it is, they never allowed the seed to come to maturation. Why? I don't know. Maybe someone didn't help them. Maybe someone tried to treat them like a grown plant. Maybe they want to treat them, I don't know. Maybe you're one of those people watching today that you really, ever since you've been born again, nothing's really happened. I'll tell you, if you'll listen to me, and I, I try to get the message to you the best I can. If you listen to me, I will water your seed and help it grow to maturation. I believe in bringing forth mature believers. Now, go back to one little thing he told Noah. He said, Noah, build this ark. And remember, the ark is a type of Christ. He said, build this ark and rooms Rooms shall you make in the ark. Well, if the ark is Christ, then there's rooms in Christ. You got a room there. I got a room there. Room in Christ. We say, well, how can you uh, say that? That's Old Testament. New Testament speaks of this. John 14, 2. Jesus said, in my Father's house are many King James says, mansions. All others say, rooms are dwelling places. So in my Father's house are many dwelling places. The question is, who was the Father's house? You see, the Bible says you and I as believers, we are houses, dwelling places of the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit lives in this house. Jesus lives in this house. Jesus, the, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is living in this house. Me, maybe not this physical house as much as in my spirit, which is in this physical house. So you see, I'm a house. You're a house. Some people are houses of devils. That's not you, though. You're a house for the Holy Spirit of God. Now listen. Listen carefully. In my Father's house are many rooms. Jesus, when he walked the earth, he was the house of the Father. That's why he said the Father dwells in me. The works that I do is the Father in me that does the works. So Jesus was the house of the Father. So what Jesus is saying here in this verse of Scripture, and we get caught up in all, everybody wants to go have a material mansion in a spiritual dwelling. Now, I don't know where we get all these things. One word, and we create doctrines. Hey, write millions of songs. 
And don't you dare take my mansion away from me unless you're going to build me a cabin over in the corner of glory land somewhere. Now, I don't mean to get picky with you, but sometimes we can get silly and it becomes doctrine. And then it really puts people in bondage. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, in my Father's house are many rooms. Jesus was the house of the Father. And what Jesus was saying in me, there's a place for you. Just like Noah had rooms in the ark. In the house of the Father, which is Jesus, there's a room for you. The Father's house, Jesus, the house of the Father. Jesus said, I prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. Now, where is he? He's in you. Now, you're getting him. You're going to be one together. He's simply saying, where I am, you are. We're together. We're one. Now, there's a place prepared in Christ, and that place in Christ is a place of rest. Rest in him. Noah was in an ark, which was a type of Christ, and Noah's name means rest. Rest was in the ark. There's a rest in the ark. There's a rest in the ark, which is Christ. And there's a place of rest for you and your family. Now, sometimes you can be like Peter in the boat, mentally and emotionally be out of the boat. Sometimes we don't realize who's in the boat with us. Especially when the storms get kind of rough and the winds get to blowing and the sea gets to raging. Boy, it's easy, easy to forget who is in the boat with us. It's his boat. He's the ark. We're in there. We're in a room. We're safe. See, Noah got into this ark of Christ and the flood waters began to shake the ark as it lifted it. The waters that flooded the world system floated Noah's boat. And that boat took a, a journey, a ship trip. And it stayed out there floating. And one day it settled on the top of Mount Ariat. And that word Ariat means the curse has been reversed. God has taken you and I from a troubled world to a place where the curse is reversed. And you say, well, when we all get to heaven, well, what about now? Because Noah, I mean, if that's a type of going to heaven, he sure messed up after he got stepped out into heaven. First thing he did is he got drunk and started to curse all over again. His son got cursed. But in the meantime, you see, God has taken us from a cursed world to an uncursed place. We're going from something old to something new. We have crossed through a threshing uh, floor of uh, something old. We're, we've been for a season here in neither. We've been right in the middle. A little bit in the old and a little bit in the new. But we're moving forward now. And these days will appear to be out of order in many ways. But God is a God of order. He's highly ordered. And you're going to find that order in the Spirit. Now I'm going to ask Caleb, Felicia, y'all come on back up and share some songs before we say goodbye to everybody. Hang in. Don't just run off. We want you to know we love you. Well, we got this song we've been working on. And so when I say we, I've been playing the music on it, but Felicity and Mom's been working on it, so I'm just here to get into the spirit. You know, the, the Bible says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound minds. And we all have different gifts in our life, and we all have different ministries in our life, but we all come together as one as the body of Christ. And where I come in is where, you know, the Lord starts speaking to my life in music. And it's in music that God just begins to speak. It's like the David when he began to play music before the kings and all the kings out there. And David began to play his harp and, and he began to just worship the Lord and just pray.
praise his name, and the anointing of God just began to flow through David. The song, the songs of David just began to come out because of his spirit, his connection with God. And David began to prophesy, and all that David became was one with God. It was one with God. And the anointing of God became over David. And David spoke to so many kings out there. And there were so many people out there David spoke to. But it all started with the music and the gift and the anointing that fell upon David. Because David knew who he was in the midst of Christ. It hasn't been a bed of roses since I started on the way. And Lord, you know I'm not complaining. There's just something I.
Still I'm trying hard to serve you From the depths of my heart And though I know I don't deserve you Still I'm trying hard to serve you From the depths of my heart, my heart. No matter what we go through in life, He's there in the depths of our heart. He knows our name. He knows our thoughts. He knows where we are in life. And if we just reach out, Jesus, how many knows that He'll reach back into us? If we just open our ears to hear Him, how many knows that He'll speak to us? If we just give Him what it is that's heavy on our hearts, that's heavy on our shoulders, and we just give it to Him, how many knows that he'll take it, he'll put it in his hands, and he will show us the way, because he knows our name.
That's pretty powerful. He knows your name. I want to thank everyone for tuning in, being a part with us today. <clears throat> Maybe soon we'll be able to uh, get together, like I said earlier, shake hands, hug next. They say, we won't go back to that. They're full of baloney. You know, we'll do what we want to do because we're free. We're free in Jesus and we're one, we're one body. We love the Lord. We love you. Blessings upon your house. And I pray that the God of mercy and grace will honor you and bless you and, and prosper your way and heal your bodies in the name of Jesus. Blessings to you. Amen.